Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever. This is a continuation of the last one where we started to establish our first steps in Bishop to Auckland to Seaford and we're trying to grow these cities. Now if you remember in the last one, uh, we just got to the point where this guy was doubling his capacity. As you can see, that's now happened, which means there's a lot of stone is about to get dumped from her here to here. If we have a look at the details, we've got 58 stored potential, 168 number of items which could be sent to customers. In other words, if, we've, if we're not basically moving this stuff, then we're not doing our job. What we don't want to see is a number here. We want that to drop down. We want that to go up. We want to shift everything we can. So we're going to need more of these road vehicles here. So we we'll click on freight. We'll go for one, two, three. So we're going to double that. We're going to set line and we're going to go for fish stone. Now the thing is, putting more stone into here is obviously going to affect this guy. Uh, his production is currently 100. His limit is now 200. So you can see he's also expanded. He's now breached 100 limit. He's now on 200. And as a result, there's a whole lot of material waiting over here. Now we don't have a depot down this neck of the woods, so I might just quickly build one. In fact, actually, let me just double click that one. Yeah. Doesn't appear to be any running cost to having a depot, so uh, I think we can just to be... Oh. <laughs> that wasn't meant to happen. Okay, I didn't cost too much. That's fine. What I was meant to do was put another road depot down here just to get things on, on the move quickly, so uh, let's put shift... M and spin him round like that. And we're gonna go by freight and one, two, three. Now then, here's the thing. Actually, I'm gonna do four. What I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna take these materials to Auckland. I'm gonna take these materials to Seaford. Now it is a long way, that's the thing. This should strictly be done by by a train or something. In fact, we may even need more than four if we're gonna do this. Uh because it is such a long way. So why don't we go and head and buy another two. And we shall set line, new line. And we're going to go from here. And we're going to drop it into somewhere in here. But we don't yet have a depot for that. So let's click on truck station. We're going to find somewhere near the industry and the commerce ideally and somewhere that isn't horrendously expensive to build so I'm thinking let's drop him in could put him in there or here that would get commerce and that would get industry that's probably about the best spot we can find although it will restrict their growth up this hill but I doubt they're going to grow up that hill anyway so but it is fantastically expensive to build that. It's going to cost 80k just to put that down. Because of that horrible hill. We could demolish things and build it, but then it'll cost even more money. As you can see, it'll cost 160k just to, just to put it in there. And that will destroy some, vi some, um, some buildings. What about over here? What's that going to do? It's not a very good catchment. We could possibly put it in there and destroy that with a road. So why don't we go ahead and do that? It's actually going to destroy two and cost us a quarter of a million. So that's not good. Can we build a narrow road? There we go. Okay, that's a hundred. I can live with that. For the sake of the catchment, I can live with that. So we're going to add station to the, and this is the uh, Seaford Conmat run. So we're going to go with C Conmat. Spell that wrong. Let's create the line. 
and that should start them off. Now, how do we tell the difference between these guys? Well, we could color code them if we could be bothered. So what we could do is we click on him and see, you know, he's Seaford Conmat, which is the light blue. And uh, did I call him Conman? <laughs> Let's call him C Conmat, not Conman. Uh, the, the, bish, the bush one is orange, whereas this guy is the blue. So if we click on details, what we could do is we could make him a kind of a light blue color. Just makes him a little bit easy to identify. Certainly not something you need to do, but if you want to do it, you can. Let's click on him. He's also a blue one. Now, what's going to happen is, is this facility is going to start to realize that we've got more than one destination coming out of here. That's a stone one, so we can color him the gray one. That's the blue one. Uh, what it'll do is it'll start to decide who to assign goods to. That's where it gets interesting, because when goods come out of here and they're deposited here, it actually apportions them to different lines. So there's two lines taking goods, and it'll decide which ones it's going to put things in. And that will be based on a number of factors, but essentially it's going to be based on how well things are being taken away. So it'll work itself out, let me put it that way. Do you know what? I think I... Oh, yeah, it's alright, it's fine. I thought I just colour-coded one wrong, but I didn't. I realised what happened. Uh, this guy is the grey, he's bringing the stone in. So, you know, it's nice because just visually we're looking at it and we can identify what it's doing. But, like I say, it's completely not necessary. I don't know what he's doing, he's orange. It also makes it look kind of interesting, you know? Right, so what's he doing? 118, so that's gone up 10 already, that's on a, up from 108. There you go, you see what's happening now? Is it split the materials into two different lines? This is the Bish one, which has got considerably more. This is the more established line. Uh, but this one is going to start picking up as the as the demand kicks in, it'll start to assign more to it. But you can keep your eye on that and see what's going on. I think we've almost color-coded these guys. There's probably an easier way to do that. I hope there is. A way of coloring the trucks um, more effectively. 160 out of 200. So we're, you know, we're moving stone pretty well out of here. That should be making uh, a profit now. Meanwhile, we've got 20 passengers waiting, so where's our train gone? There he is. Let's have a look. 19 out of 34, and he's actually starting to run a profit this year. So, again, after a couple of years, the profit starts to come in. Right, what I'd like to do is something that we talked about last time, which is establish this run here. Uh, the idea is to take the logs to here, produce the planks, bring them back here, and make tools. We're then going to move the tools into Seaford. Uh, we should also think about moving the tools back into Bishop Auckland as well because that's going to help grow both cities. And as these things grow, we're going to make more money out of passenger runs. So it's all a win-win, uh, but it all starts with an investment. So let's bring up the, not that one, the contour map and see where we want, we want to head this direction. Uh, so we want our platform to be growing out that way, if need be. Uh, thinking about the future... If we ever want to link Seaford to Swanage, then we're going to want a line that bypasses it like that. So if we build our platform here, then we could have a second platform that was a throughput straight through to there. So we know we're, we know we're making the right decision here. Uh, passenger, train station, and uh, we want to orient it that kind of direction. We also want to look at the cost of it. It's going to cost about a hundred grand no matter what we do, but the other thing is we want to make sure we're in the catchment of this thing and we can't tell if we're in the catchment easily unless we actually build the road first. So I would strongly advise that you build the road first because it goes off the distance from this entrance along the road like that. 
And only by building the road will you understand if you've got the catchment or not. And you can see that has got the catchment there. It also looks a bit bad. So what I'm going to do is just round that road off a little bit. Too much curvature. Narrow angle. <laughs> Okay, 122. Probably about that angle, I think. There you go. Um, having put that down, I've just realised what a complete derp mistake I just made. Uh, that's a passenger station. We don't want a passenger station. <laughs> we don't want a passenger station at all. We want a freight station. So that was a mistake, never mind. 90, 95k. This is why we're on easy. Um, because, well, A, I make mistakes, and B, I'm still learning this game. But, you know, the important thing is the catchment's there, so that won't be connected yet, so line usage will be no. I know you're reaching for your keyboard right now, aren't you? You're reaching for your keyboard. You're, you're about to say, squirrel, you utter, utter derp. And you'd be right. Let's not worry about it. Let's move on. Right, we need to have another one here, but there's contours here. There's a hill. I want to avoid that hill if possible. Uh, we could put the platform through there, but that would mean crossing the road. It's not the end of the world, but I'm kind of thinking we can squeeze around there with a the track. Uh, where are we coming from? We're coming from here. There's definitely a hill there. We could try and follow the valley that way, possibly. But let's get the freight down. And we'll spin it around like this. As you can see, it's gouging into the land there and costing us money. There's a collision, so we can't build it like that. So what I'm going to do is just step the road back a little bit. And that's going to let us drop it in like this. Now, platforms are going to build out into the side of the hill. Uh, not a lot we can do about that, and we could have gone for an 80 meter length platform, make it a lot shorter, but I'm not going to do that. I don't think it's horrendously expensive as it is, so I'm going to stick with this as it, as it stands right now, as 160 meters. This, on the other hand, um, maybe later we want to build track down the length of this thing. We could come over to the city of Dorking with a train line. We could go around and grab more resources around here. This is all quite flat near the river, so let's utilize that fact. There's no doubt about it, though. This is going to be an uphill up here. But in terms of the orientation, I think we can probably aim for that kind of angle uh, along the side there. So what we can do is build the road like that, and then spin this around and let's just zoom out and make sure we've got the right orientation something like that should do it right that's three freights and now we've got the expensive job of connecting this up with some track so let's start doing that now this is uphill so no matter what we do this is not going to be cheap it might be easier to come this way uh, that's going to track limit the speed you can see the, the, the track speed being limited there you want to avoid that at all costs really it's expensive but it's kind of working although it has just built a massive elevation which is not something I wanted to happen I should have paid more attention to that In fact, let's just trash that bit and do it again uh, because what we actually want to happen we want to hug the ground you can see the speed dropping As we hug the ground, the speed starts to come down. I don't know 
why it wants to elevate so badly. Okay. Might just be easier to build this by climbing. Essentially, I want to follow the hill down, but I think the gradient's too much for it. So we might have to snake our way down a little bit. This is going to look horrible. This is not what I had in mind. How about if we go this way? So what it's doing is it's basically building level and then gouging a valley. But actually what I want to do is go up. If it starts to tunnel, the problem is because I'm trying to get from up here down to there, uh, I think the gradient's just too much for a train. And so what we need to do is just kind of follow the contour a bit better. We might have to come this way and then around like that just to get this to work. So why don't we uh, try that. Let's go back to here. And we'll try going this way a bit. It's not going to be the fastest line. Start to cut out the ground a little bit so we start to descend. It's coming down. We're getting down to the right elevation. If we can swing around. See, it doesn't want to go down at all. You can build it up, but you can't build it down. It's quite strange. That is horrible. That is actually horrible. <laughs> Hang on, let's see if we can raise terrain, lower terrain. and get rid of that a little bit. Okay. This is nowhere near as pretty as I wanted it to be. Right, and we've gotten a gouge out the land as, land as well. What we've just done is connect that in a very um, interesting fashion. I mean, that is it's quite a drop down there. Uh, I think you would probably try and zigzag your way around a bit, a bit better than that. But that's I shall aim for something a bit better next time. That as well looks very, 
Very nasty indeed. So if we can just kind of get rid of this a little bit. Can we smooth it out? Smooth terrain. There we go. There we go. Let's make it look a lot less nasty. 40 grand to look less nasty. And then we've got to get over here. Now this one is nowhere near as bad, but a tunnel may be in order here. Let's see how much a tunnel's going to cost. 800 grand. 700 grand. Okay, I think what we should do is build it through to there like that. So it goes into the tunnel, goes through the worst of it, and then comes out here. And then from here, we can more or less try and hook the ground a bit. I find the building tool in this game particularly... particularly weird. On the one hand, it seems to do really crazy things. On the other hand, it seems to do really wonderful things. Okay. We have now established our connection. Uh, let's build a depot, because we've just spent an awful lot of money there. And we need to start turning a profit fairly quickly. Uh, so we're going to build a depot, like that. And we shall build the track in. To get it into the, in and out of the depot, like that. Has this started to accumulate anything yet, I wonder? Line usage, no, because we've not put a train there. So we've got to do the age-old thing of bring a train here so that it realises we're actually going to take stuff away, so we get the kind of link established. Uh, also, these roads, if you're to upgrade them, they'll help vehicles move between the cities, so that kind of helps growth as well, just as an aside. Right, now, we're only want we want to have a train... Um, that can haul pretty heavy stuff, because wood is pretty heavy, let's face it. Uh, what I want to do first is build a new line. This is going to be the... It's near Seaford, isn't it? So let's call it the... Let me put the town names back on. Okay, hold on. Where's the town name gone? Okay, for some reason... I'm not showing the town names anymore. Uh, never mind. We know it's Seaford. So let's call it the Seaford um, Wood Run or something like that. So we'll call it SEA Wood uh, Planks to Tools. That's what it is. And we'll color it a kind of a yellowy color. There we go. Nice, disgusting yellowy color. New vehicles available. What's this one? The MEN 19.03. And some new trains in 1965. That's cool. So we've created the line. What, uh, what train do we want? What's a crocodile do? 150 uh, kilonewtons of effort. That's that's pretty good, actually. 485 running cost. That's actually electric. I didn't put any... Did I put catenary down? I did. Thankfully. Let's go electric on that. I like the look of this. So we're going to buy this thing, and then we're going to go for wagons. And we want to go for this one, which is something that can handle logs, planks, and construction materials. So what's going to happen is um, the logs are going to go down there, and then it's going to bring planks back to here. Now, that's the end of the line for the train. The train can't move these tools, but we're going to use trucks to move the tools, so it's not a big deal. So how many can we move? That's the question. Well, it'll take 13 out of each one. So let's go for, and they cost like 800 each. So let's go for three, because that is a lot of money. We can add more later. And then we're going to do set line, and we're going to go for C wood tools. And the last thing we want to do is change the color to that sickly yellow. Uh, why are you not coming out? Okay. 
Why is he still in the depot? Why are you still in the depot, bro? Okay, something's not right here. Let's bring up the line manager again. Oh, I didn't... I didn't actually add the stations. What a boss. What a boss. Right, so you go to the, to the, and then back to here. Yeah, it would help if we told him where to actually go. Cool. There he is. Wow. Whoa, look at this. Now this guy is going to cost us an awful lot of money, initially. Because what's going to happen is he's going to come to here. Nothing's going to be there. He's going to go all the way down there. Nothing's going to happen there either. And then he's going to come all the way back to here. And then back to there. And it's probably going to take him a year to do it. And at which point, when he gets back here next time, they will go, Oh, you want logs? Well, I'll give you logs. First electric train to arrive, buy an electric train to run a line. Woohoo! We just got an achievement for that. I must admit, it does look pretty cool. What was his top speed? What's that guy's top speed? 75. He's doing 68. I can already see a problem here. I, I can see that because this the size of the of the run. Um, we're gonna need two of these guys on the go. But until we start turning a profit, I don't want to drop two lines on there. Because that is significant investment. I think we was on about 24 mil. So that represents an eight million dollar investment right there. And I want to see some money. Line usage, no. That's probably going to show no until he gets down there, at which point. Um, the way the game works is it's not enough for him to just take goods away. He has to take them to a place that wants them. So once he's made the connection between here and here, he establishes the supply and the demand, at which point that goes... Oh, there you go. He goes, yes, you can have these goods. So, actually, I think what I just said was wrong, and the game does appear to actually establish the link just by taking it away. For some reason, it must work out that you're actually going to take it somewhere good, so... I sit corrected. That does work. Right, while he's on his way, let's have a look what's going on over here. Um, let's see how many passengers there are. 16. Uh, the bus is doing well. Eight passengers... Turning in a little bit of a profit. People are not standing around, so things are going well there. Seaford. Details. Okay, mediocre, poor line usage. So, not the best service that we're providing, but we're making money, so that's a good start. 32 out of 34. Uh, finances are pretty strong. But he's, he's getting close to capacity. He's getting close to needing another carriage. Uh, there seems to be a lot of people coming out here. What about you? Are you making money? 13 of 13. So yeah, passenger transport around here seems to be quite strong in this city. In Bishop Auckland. Yeah, 21%. So that's a better usage right there. Okay, how are we doing on the rest of the stuff? Um, 210. All right, that's upgraded again. So that's insane. I think we're going to have to get more trucks on the on the road because let's have a look at the details. Uh, 116 store potential 231. Yeah, we've got too much storage, so we need to get more trucks on the road because we need to move more of this stuff. So we have got the new MAN. 19.301. What's the difference? With That does 11 capacity, that does 16. This has a 60 top speed, that has an 80. Uh, I reckon these guys could turn a profit here. So why don't we... And the other thing is, I think we can put these guys on the... on the journey up to there, because that is they're faster as well. So they could definitely benefit from that journey. 
that upgrade for that journey. So let's go and buy some of these. Uh, they're 259 each, so I'm thinking let's buy one, two, three. And can we open them? Yes, we can. Set line. They're going to go for stone. So they're going to be grey in colour. Let's do them before they leave the door. I can't see a quicker way of doing this. I really hope there is. There you go. Stone. Right, done. So off he goes, completely the wrong direction, like a boss. Off he goes, the wrong direction, like a boss. And he's got stone on him. So three trucks got created, two went off in that direction and one went here. But you can see straight away that there's plenty of stone here. So I don't think they're going to have a problem. The construction coming out of here is insane. That's going to put more stone over here. Um, now then, C is only getting 10. They're getting 90. 200 out of 400. So they upgraded as well. Now Seaford is getting 40% of what it needs. And Auckland is getting 56% of what it needs. But still, there's a lot of stuff lying around here. If we go to details, try to ship more construction material. Do you know what? I think we will. Let's just double check um, if one of these guys is turning out profit. They're turning out massive profits. So I'm going to buy some more. We're going to get another two of those. And we're going to... I think they're bright orange, aren't they? I like that kind of orange, I think. We're going to put them on, the, on that con mat line. And then we're going to get another two and ship them up to Seaford, I think. One, two. So the Seaford line is... Seaford buses, Seaford Conmats is a light blue colour. Which is like that kind of colour. And that kind of colour. Like that. Because, you know, we're about to dump a whole lot of stone here, so that's going to create even more of this stuff, and we need to move it. If we don't move it, we're just basically leaving money on the floor. That's the way I look at it. But those big trucks should start to move things a bit quicker and a bit better. But there you go, you can see the different colours coming in. Which is kind of nice. So I, you know, I know where they're going just by looking at the colour, which is really interesting. 262, yeah, capacity's going up and up and up. This, this is just getting crazy. You know, at this rate, we're going to have to start shipping things somewhere else, like maybe Seven Oaks. We could even think about a train line to Seven Oaks. Given that we've got that track there as well, and that track there as well, you know, at some point we could replace these trucks with a train line to Seaford. Because what we could do is put a freight terminal there, uh, two platform freight terminal here. One of the lines could cross over to there, because this is not, this is not well used, if you think about it. There's just that one train on it, so we could easily squeeze another train along and it could branch off and come to here, even though the contours are nasty. Uh, it could come to there and drop off construction materials on a train line, and then the other platform could go off to Seven Oaks and drop goods off to here, and we could start building that up. And then the line itself could be used to come down this hill, go that way, and branch over here, and drop into Seaford, uh, drop into Bishop Auckland, and then establish a passenger run between these three. So we're then growing three cities rather than two, which is a um, pretty cool thing to do. Right, this has got seven wood, 42 production out of 100. So the, the logs that's being moved in are being converted. It is interesting because what actually happens is, you know, the logs get dumped here. And then this train has got 29 out of 39, so it's not bad. He takes them all the way down to here. Um, and drops them off. That takes time to be converted to planks. 
So the very first time he came here, he dropped planks there and he had nothing, sorry, he dropped logs there and he had no planks to go back with. So the, he then came back empty-handed. The next time he went there, the planks are all sat there. So he drops his logs off and picks the planks up from the previous run, which point he can bring them to here. Of course, when he gets here, he's going to then start creating construction stuff, like the tools. Which he's not done yet, because it's not actually been established yet. But on the next run he will, and then we're going to have to move the tools around. So we need to think about that right now, um, because we have no way of doing it. What we do have, though, is an established depot. So all we actually need to complete this run is to build another one of these guys over here. Like that. And there's a depot nearby, isn't there? Yes. So there's a depot here. So what we can do is create one, two of those. Create a new line between uh, here and here. And this is going to be the Seaford um, tools, effectively. It's going to bring tools into Seaford. So C tools like that. Dark blue it is. And we're going to go C tools like that. We're going to change them into that dark blue. It's more of a royal blue than a dark blue. Now, there's going to be nothing here initially. Uh, he should be coming back with some stuff now. There he is. So he's now got 21 planks. So he will drop them off, and then this thing will start to kick off and convert two planks into one tool. And then the, uh, the circuit will be complete and all goods will be being shipped. So if you look back down there... There should be stuff waiting back there now. There's the there's the uh, the tools being created, sorry, the planks being created from the logs that got dropped off. How is this guy doing for finances? That's the question. Right, first year he made nothing. That's completely expected. Second year he might just break even. There you go, just about breaking even. Uh, third year you can expect him to start turning a profit in. is what we want. So normally things do start to turn a profit around about the third year. Now these guys have got nothing to do yet. But, if you look here, you can see the storage there, because we just dropped off the planks, 13 planks got dropped off, and now the product is being made. So these items are being stored, but he's now, or should be picking them up. Right, he's not picked them up yet because we've not established the link yet. Okay, line usage is on, yes. So, these tools should start to appear here. And then the truck should start moving them around and the whole thing starts to move. The only thing is we need to keep on top of it and make sure that um, we're moving goods around. Like, if we start to see a, a stockpile of things lying around, then we need to put more trains in there. So, we're going to have to keep coming back and just... Monitoring what's going on. How are we doing for passengers? Right, 16 passengers lying around. Uh, where's the train at the moment? The train is just coming into the platform. And he looked pretty full. There's 36 people there, I think, so he can't take them all. Hang on, how many did he get? Oh, wait, it's fine. He's near limit, but not at limit. This is getting crazy over here. Look at this. Good grief. Good grief. It's outrageous. The amount of stuff here. But look at that now. The construction materials going to Seaford have really started to pick up. He's got 11 goods and he's making a big fat wad of cash. Up to Seaford there. They're now getting some tools. They're now getting plenty of construction materials. Notice they're on 74% though, so they're running near capacity. Auckland is still on 66%. Now, the question I'm asking myself right now is, what's the speed of the roads around here? Uh, that's on the fast limit. This is not, though. So, by upgrading this road here, we will speed up our trucks, assuming they can do 80. 
But it doesn't matter because even the cars will now to move faster, so that just gets things around a bit quicker, so that's never a bad thing. 380 production. Dear me. Th this is seriously profitable right here. So have a quick look at our finances, and, um, well, I mean, look at that. We're now starting to make a profit. Bear in mind, though, that we do start out with a 30 million loan, and there's a loan interest line here of 300,000. Uh, 300,000 on a 30 million pound loan obviously means 1%, you know, so we're not in a massive hurry to pay this off, but here's the key thing, we're making a profit. That's the key thing, we're making a profit, and we've got a huge demand over here. I'm pretty certain that we could lay on some more trucks. We could also start laying trucks up to Seven Oaks. Uh, it might just be a good investment, so what we could do is uh, start to upgrade this line. Like that. Just to make sure we've got a nice fast run up to Seven Oaks. Uh, quickly drop in a truck station. Um, we want it to be on this side of town because this is where all the industry and commerce is. I'm thinking if we if we sort of orient it like this, what we can do is not that. Needs to be a street one. There you go. So maybe truck station. No, that's really poor connection. Look at that. Unfortunately, this town is super awkward layout. We want to be dropping things right into the heart like that if we can. If we go for a single road there. Just... Mass production reached 400 production capacity at a production site. Good times. So that cost us 100 grand to drop that in there, but look at the catchment. And it only cost 11k to put that in. So we've got that. What we're going to do now is we're going to quickly establish a new line from here to here. So we're going to start growing this city as well. Now this is, what's this called? Seven Oaks. So we'll call this one Seven Con Mat. Like that. We'll bring in the freight train. We're going to need one, two, three, four. I reckon they can cope with that. And we'll get them going straight away. Like so. Change their colour. Quite a lot of micromanagement in this game. But it's pretty cool when you get it right. Right, so they're now growing nicely. We could also think about, you know, maybe a local bus service here. Uh, I might just link that while I'm here. Okay, that should have been... Grade. Construction not possible. Doing the town a favour, basically. Whoa, the Boeing 737, 1968. Oh yes, look at that. Sadly, we're not on aeroplanes yet. We need a lot of money for an airplane. Airports themselves are pretty expensive. But here they come, the latest things, they've probably not got much on them. Because they've not established a connection yet. Um, but they're here. And they're going to start growing Seven Oaks, but we're not moving passengers uh, between those cities yet. 322 production, so... Once that starts to get picked up here... Actually, C Seaford needs probably some more, to be honest. But I think we'll have to leave it there. That was a little fairly long episode, but things are moving along pretty well. Uh, I like what's happening. We've had a couple of mistakes over there setting up the train line but I think it's turning into a profit this is 
quite lucrative what we've done here. And look at the distance. It's like a really short distance, but we're now growing three towns off the back of it. That's it from me. Take care, guys. Happy transporting.